whatever place you're in, the Spirit of the Lord is in that place. And I declare, even as his word declares, that wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Yes. Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for joining us for our dive-in session. We are so excited to see you all here today. We're looking forward to everything that's going to come forth here today. Looking for a word from God today, a message, something that sticks to the ribs, sticks to the bones, that we can just take with us. That's what we're in expectation of tonight. We know God is never short on delivery. He is always showing up and delivering. So we're looking forward to that today. So take the time to invite people, anyone that you don't see on here or anyone that you didn't know needed to be here tonight. We want you to take the time to invite them. Go ahead and send out those invites anytime throughout the service. If anybody comes to mind, invite them because you never know how the Lord is going to speak. And you never know who needs to hear this. Even if you don't know or they don't know that they needed to hear it, invite them so they can get the chance to hear it and hear a mighty and powerful word from the Lord. So at this time, we're going to go ahead and get into our intercessory prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you today, Father, just thanking you for allowing us to be here today. Father, we thank you for allowing us to be here today, Father, waking us up, Father, in our right mind, Father. As you go forth in this service, Father, cover everyone in-house and online, Father, that is a part of this service, Father, that you cover everyone, Father. Whether they're at work, Father, those who are here now and those who are coming later, or those who even and watch the replay in the end, Father. We just pray that you cover them and that you touch them, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, that you manifest in their life as well, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, be with them, Lord. Be with them, Father. Be with all of us, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, let your word come, Father. And our minds may it stick to our ribs, Father. May it stick in our minds, Father. May your scriptures, Father. Your verses, your words, may it stick to us, Father. May we not forget, Father, but may we take it, Father, and use it, Father, throughout our lives, Father, and not forget it, and not let it go open one in and out the other ear, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, Father, we repent of any sin and anything that we've done knowingly or unknowingly, Father, that is against you, Father. Anything that will hinder these words from coming forth, Father, your teachings from coming forth, Father. Anything that will get in the way of that, Father, we come against in Jesus' mighty name, Father. But we usher in your spirit right now, Lord. We pray that service, Lord. We pray that you come forth and manifest your power and your will throughout this service in Jesus' mighty name, Father, the way that only you can, Father, in Jesus' mighty name, Father, as that you go forth, Father, throughout this service, Father, go forth mightily, Father, rush through this place, Father, in-house and online and even in the replay, Father, don't let the algorithm get a hold of it, Father, but go forth, Father, may it reach those that it needs to reach, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, Father, that you have your way, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, God. In Jesus' mighty name, God, that you go forth, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, God, come forth, Father. Touch every person, whatever it is that they're dealing with, Father. Break it off of them, Father. Let when they walk into this building or when they log in, Father. Let the chains be broken, Father. Any bondage, anything that they're dealing with, may it be broken, Father. Anything that they're dealing with, may it be broken off of them, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, God. In Jesus' mighty name, lift every spirit, Father. Whatever it is that anyone's dealing with as they come into this place, Father. A variety of issues, Father. May, may it be broken off of in Jesus' mighty name, Father. So we just thank you for what you're doing already, Father. We thank you for what you're going to do in advance, Father. We're looking forward to everything that you're going to do in advance, Father. We are looking forward to you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, God, you are so good, Father. And you're going to come forth mightily, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, God. So we're ready, Father. We're preparing our hearts and our minds, Father. We're preparing our hearts and our minds for you, Father. Our time and attention for you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, God. We place every care and every worry at your feet, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. 
Amen, amen, be able to Rasha. God is so good, sons. Keep that atmosphere going. We want to keep that atmosphere going. Don't lose that. Keep it with you as we're going to go ahead and get ready to transition to our next part. We're going to uh, pass it over to our sister Belinda. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us here tonight for our dive in, for our dive in, and now. We're getting ready for our worship service. So I ask you to join in with me. Open your hearts, open your minds, open your souls and your spirits. Let's just put our hands together for a minute to give God praise, to give him glory because he is worthy. God, we honor you, God. We bless your name, Jesus. We glorify you, Lord. We lift our voices to you, O oh God. We lift our hearts to you, O oh God, to let you know, God, that you are God, to let you know, God, that we trust you, O oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us tonight night online. Thank you everyone that is here and we're going to go ahead and get ready for our worship tonight. Hallelujah. We want to let you know oh God that you are worthy of glory. We worship you oh God. Hallelujah God. You are you you are worthy and no one can worship you for me for all the things you've done for me and no one can worship you my worship, all of my worship, receive my worship, all of my worship, here is my worship, all of my worship, receive my worship. I will always worship 
worship you. My worship, 
all of my worship. Receive my worship. All of my worship. Because you, Lord, you are worthy. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. If he's worthy, if he's worthy, give him glory and honor. Give him glory and honor. Lift your voice and let him know that you worship him. Lift your voice and let him know that you praise him. Lift your voice and let him know that you love him. Lift your voice and let him know that you honor him. Lift your voice and let him know that you praise him. Lift your voice and let him know that he is God, yeah. He is God, yeah. We won't be silent. We will always praise you, yeah. We will always praise you, yeah, yeah. We honor you. We glorify you. We magnify your name, oh God, because you are the most high God, yeah. You are the most high God, yeah. We won't be silent. We won't be silent. We won't be silent, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. You are worthy of all honor. You're worthy of all praise. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Can we put our hands together and open our mouths and praise him right there for a moment, right here for a moment? Right here for a moment, right here for a moment, right here for a moment. Hallelujah. Let's praise him for a moment, for a moment. He woke us up this morning and brought us here. Don't he deserve the glory? Don't he deserve the praise? Because he is our God. Hallelujah. And because you are our God. We're going to give you the glory. We're going to let you know, God, that we glorify you. We glorify you. We glorify you, oh God. And we say, be glorified in this place. Be glorified in this temple. Be glorified everywhere, everywhere that we go. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to give him praise right now. We're going to have a Holy Ghost party right now in this place. Hallelujah. in 
the heaven be glorified in the earth be glorified in this temple Jesus Jesus be thou glorified be glorified in the heavens be glorified in the earth be glorified in this temple place God we glorify you in this place God and we welcome you we welcome you in this place we welcome you God we know God that there is a word God tonight oh God and we give your name all praise and honor hallelujah and we just thank you in Jesus name hallelujah and we're gonna get ready to bring up our speaker for tonight, none other than the very own prophet, Dr. Terrence Kruger. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallel praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. I'm looking for a real praise and not a repeat. Come on, somebody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Glory to your wonderful name. Hallelujah. We magnify you. We exalt you. We saw you. We bless you. Hallelujah. For there is none like you. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Give it to him. Come on. Give it to him. He's deserving of it all. Hallelujah. He is deserving of it all. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ha, ah, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. We bless you, Father, for you are good. You're worthy to be glorified. You're worthy to be magnified, worthy to be lifted high. Hallelujah, above our circumstances, above what we're going through, above what we're experiencing in our bodies. We thank you, Father. 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 Thank you for being good. Thank you for being kind. We thank you for being merciful. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you, Father, for there is none like you. There is none like you. There is none like you. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. We can search and search and still find the same man. So there's none like him. Hallelujah. Tell somebody there's none like him. Tell somebody else there's none like him. Glory to God. We bless the name of the Lord on tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to ask all of you that are this way to come towards this middle so I don't have to look to this side of the room. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you, Father. Sister Belinda, you come on down a little too. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord. I know, I know these are for the microphones, but that is annoying me. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. We bless the name of the Lord. Thank God for those who are watching online. Y'all send some invites out. It looks a little bare on there. Glory to God. We want to get ready because there's a word on tonight. There is a word. I feel my teaching mantle coming on in today. Glory to God. And I want to teach on something um, that is a popular yet controversial, controversial topic 
um, in the body of Christ. And I am so grateful and honored for the opportunity to be able to share this with you. And I don't think I've ever really taught on this um, um, like I'm about to do today. Um, but praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. So, so it's Belinda, get ready because we're getting ready to go on a roller coaster tonight with scriptures. And those of you that are watching on tonight, I want you to send some invites out. Send them invites out. Brother James, share it again. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We want to get the people in the house because we want, there is a word from the Lord on tonight. And we want um, uh, uh, everyone that can to be able to receive. Amen. Tonight, I want to talk. <laughs> Glory to God from the topic, grace, living and remaining saved. Again, that is grace, living and remaining saved. If someone is online that is helping me on tonight, just type certain things in the chat so it'll kind of help some of the saints out. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. And first, I want to go, uh, I'm hearing some noise. Glory to God. Okay. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. You might have to disconnect it. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. We're going to go over to Ephesians. Thank you, Jesus. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 9. Like I said, we're going to go on a little ride tonight, go on a little journey. Thank you, Jesus. And we're going to stroll through some scriptures, praise the Lord, and we're going to come with the power of God's word. Amen. Again, that is grace, living, and remaining saved. Glory to God. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 9. What does it say? For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Tell your neighbor, this ain't about you and what you can do. This is about what you've been graced with. So here it is we see in this verse of scripture and um. Uh, we see that it says, for by grace are ye saved. Somebody say, it's by grace that I'm saved through faith. So one thing about it is um, I can't be saved unless I have the faith for it. So therefore, it is through the revelation of grace, the grace of God, that salvation um, is afforded as an opportunity. But it is through faith that I embrace it and it becomes mine. Now, the problem is <clears throat> you got a lot of people in the body of Christ that is riding on grace. And they're grace this and grace that. And oh, it's the grace that I can live how I want to live. I can do what I want to do because I'm covered by grace. I'm not under the law. I'm under grace. Somebody say grace. <clears throat> But the problem with that is what we're going to find out today because it is not uh, 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 the way that the world, uh, I shouldn't even say the world, it's not the way that a lot of the church perceives grace to be. Because let me explain something to you once we go through some more of these scriptures first. Um, now I want you to go over and, and, and also um, uh, it mentions again that it's not by your works. In other words, you ain't good enough. To have this kind of grace. You, you, there's nothing that you've ever done that was so kind enough for you to deserve grace. So now let me show you something about this word grace. Glory to God. This word uh, grace here. Let me find my verse of scripture. Glory to God. I should have had this already open. I've been scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. So y'all have mercy on me. So, um, Ephesians 2, verses 8 through 9. There we go. So, now this word grace, um, it is, I'm not even going to try to pronounce it in the Greek, but it speaks of graciousness. Somebody say graciousness. 
um, it is to uh, um, show a kindness of the heart. It is to show uh, uh, um, a generosity or it is to show um, uh, uh, mercy. It is to show kindness towards you in a way. So now let me show you this because a lot of people get hung up on grace. Um, and so that means that you now stop at the level of being nice. And the thing about it is you're not you're not designed to just be riding on grace only. So what do, what do you mean, prophet? Because it is by grace that we save. So our salvation is dependent upon grace. Absolutely. Your salvation is dependent upon grace. But we're going to find out to what extent. Glory to God. All right. So now go over with me uh, uh, to um, let's see here. Romans chapter six, verse 14. Again, that's Romans chapter 6, verse 14. Just keep your mic ready, Sister Belinda, because you got a, a couple of them. Thank you, Jesus. Romans chapter 6, verse 14. Glory to God. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For sin shall not have dominion over you. Somebody say, for sin shall not have dominion over me. Now read on. What does it say? For ye are not under the law. For you are not any longer under the law. So the law that was established that will take you out real quick because you was jacked up. Hello somebody. It wasn't showing no kind of mercy. Glory to God. And so that same law, that same law, you are no longer under that anymore but you're under grace glory to god just mute it when you when you're not reading so that way we won't get that feedback you're no longer under uh uh, uh you're no longer under the law so therefore the uh the the strictness of how the law is set up you're not bound to that because guess what now when it comes to that now when it comes to sin you're so easy to be uh found guilty but because now you are under grace, somebody say grace, because I'm under grace, I have to understand that this, this thing called grace is now, watch this, a lot of people say it's the grace that covers, it's the grace that keeps me. No, you're wrong. It's not the grace, in a sense, you can say the grace keeps you, but the grace, watch this, just gives you access. Somebody say grace is access. Oh, glory. I'm going to show you what this grace is all about. Now, um, so we are not under, uh, uh, Sister Shea, can you turn me down a little bit? Just a little bit. Glory to God. Got to get this, this thing out of here because that's going to annoy me. Thank you, Jesus. I got the red mic. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. That's much better. Thank you. All right. So it says, uh, um, for sin shall not have dominion. In other words, at one point, sin had mastery over you. Sin had dominion over you. It had rulership over you. And this is why it was so easy for you to do it. Because guess what we did? We just succumbed to it. We just fall right in. We just fall right on into it. But guess what? Now it is no longer your master because you've been made free through grace. And because you're made free through grace, why would you let sin keep ruling? All right. Now let's keep moving because I ain't made all my points yet. Glory to God. Uh, so let's go to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16. Hebrews Chapter 4, verse 16. Glory to God. I'm excited. Thank you, Jesus. Hebrews, go ahead. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Mm. Let us therefore boldly come unto the throne of graciousness. Of kindness, 
of showing mercy towards us. Let us come before that throne. In other words, when we come before God, because of the grace has given us access, now we can get to the Father and we can come before his throne. We can come boldly before his throne and talk to him and he'll show mercy towards us. He'll show kindness towards us and move for us. So I got to get you the understanding of grace first so you can understand where we're going. Glory to God. Because so many people, again, are so hung up on talking about grace but still living junky. And they feel like I'm still going to make it in. All I got to do is just keep repenting, 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 repenting. No, no, no. We're going to find out. Mm -hmm. We're going to mess around and find out tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Did you finish that whole verse? Okay. So, um, with salvation comes transformation. With salvation comes transformation. So, if I say that I have received grace... And there is no transformation. What grace do you got? Because we thought we were just able to, grace was just a free pass so we can make it into heaven. You know, we can still live our best life, but we'll still make it in because we, we just connected to the vine. No, no, no. Lord have mercy. Grace is the very thing that gets you connected, but it does not sustain. What do you mean? You're trying to say that, that, that the power of Christ don't have the ability to keep you? Absolutely. He'll keep you if you want to be kept. Key words. If you want to be. So here it is. We see that grace now uh, has the ability to give you access to transformation, but it does not transform you. It does not transform you out of lifestyles. It only creates, it only gives you the capacity to be made new, but now you got to make new decisions. That's the only change that salvation brings. It gives you a fresh start. And now, because I am under grace, sin does not have power over me, but now I got power over it. So now, I should not let sin just keep ruling in me so easy. Because I'm supposed to have dominion over it. But when it's the other way around, I got to ask myself, is grace still working? We just think once grace is there, grace just, you just press start. Okay. Start. Okay. And now grace just start moving by itself and I just walk away from the machine and just let it do what it want to do. And I just do what I, I go watch TV. I go get me a, get me some liquor, and I go and smoke me a blunt, and I'm good, cause grace is working for me. No, that's not, not that's not how it works. No, grace gives you access to a new life, but you got to live it. Lord have mercy. So go to First Corinthians chapter fifteen. <clears throat> First Corinthians chapter fifteen. We almost done running through these. Glory to God. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 10. But by grace, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. So, here it is. The apostle is telling you what you see me doing. It's by the grace of God I'm able to do this. Now, read on. What does it say? And his grace, mm -hmm. which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. Mm -hmm. But I labored more abundantly mm -hmm. than they all. So, what does he mean it wasn't in vain? What does he mean it wasn't in vain? That sounded to me like it was some work that needed to be done. Sound to me like I wasn't just getting no free pass. I'm getting a ring. Glory to God. I'm getting a ring. Glory to God. So, sounds to me like I have to realize that grace is not the stopping point. Grace is just the entrance. Grace is the entrance. What is grace? Grace is God's gift. 
Let's read this last verse and then I'm going to ride. Well, I got a few more. I'm just going to hit and read these. First Corinthians, um, uh, I'm going to let y'all read this one with me and then the rest of them I'll just quote. And you can read them in your own time. Romans chapter 3. Let's turn there. The last place we're going to turn together. Romans chapter 3, verses 20 through 24. Romans chapter 3. Verses 20 through 24. If I give you a flashlight, Sister, um, sister, uh, I'm getting ready to call you somebody else, Sister Shay. You responsible about putting batteries in there. I just gave you what you needed so that you can have light. But what happens when I don't make the light work? What happens when I don't make the effort to turn to turn it on? I'll never see the light. And sadly, this is the state of a lot of people in the body of Christ. They're living like they want to do, live. And like like the, the old saints, they used to sing this song. I used to love it, especially when they used to break the music down. And glory to God, that about tore the church up. It used to be a song called Jesus Will Pick You Up If You Have to Reach Way Down. And it was a verse in that song that said, if you go out on, and party all night long, singing in the choir on Sunday morning like you done nothing wrong, if you can't praise them the way you used to, it's like you're doing the same thing that sinners do. So, I got to realize that grace don't cover all of that. What you mean, prophet? I don't agree with that. That ain't the word of God. What do what I mean? Because grace was the entrance. Grace gives you access. It's the entrance and access. What do you mean? It gives me the entrance to salvation. And then it gives me access to the Father, access to the Holy Ghost, and access to living right. Grace is not obligated to make me. Grace is not going to make you holy. It only leads you to holiness. It leads you to the path of righteousness. But what happens is the gift of God, in other words, the gift of God, which was salvation through Jesus, his son. Now what you got to see this is as God now says, I'm going to be kind to the earth. Be kind to the people. I love them, and I don't want them to perish because it's not my will that they perish, but shall have everlasting life. So therefore, I got to send something to be able to set them up so they can be able to enter in and have access to it because the way they is now, according to the law, they won't have it because a lot of them can't live half worth nothing, and they can't keep up. Watch this consistency. So now because of this, I send my son as a representation. He will be my grace in the earth. And those who accept him will now have access. The only way to the father is through me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. So therefore, I got to understand that if he, if he say I stand at the door and knock, He's trying to give you access. He wants to give you access, but am I willing to receive what comes behind the access? So now Jesus comes and he gives me access. I accept him through faith. By faith, I believe and I receive. And when I receive, I have the ability to receive more because now he opens me up and shows me more possibility. He gives me access to walk into a whole nother realm. And now, wow, I didn't even know it was this much more to life. I didn't know that I had this much more possibility. I didn't know this kind of life could be this good. So now, whereas I felt defeated, I felt like I could not reach God. I felt like God wasn't listening to me. I felt like I wasn't getting ahead in life. Now, when I have stepped over in grace... It's giving me access to a land that I have the ability to explore. But the key thing is I got to explore. I got to be the one to go forth and experience 
Grace will not make me. It will give me access. And it will lead and guide me to the things that I have the benefits for. So Romans chapter 3, verses 20 through 24, what does it say? Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So what do we start saying? We start saying, uh-uh, don't judge them because we all done sin and come short of the glory of God. No, he's talking about your past. He talking about how you was living. He ain't right now. You supposed to be aiming to come out of it. So what he's saying is, he says, for we all have had that experience. So nobody can look down on each other, and nobody, and say, well, I'm better than you, and I'm, I'm better than you. No, because we all have been there. We all messed up, and yes, true enough as it is, we still be messing up. But it's by the grace. Lord have mercy. You finished? Or did I stop you? Okay, that's good. So, I just want to make sure before I started going, because my mind, thank you, Jesus, is racing. So, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, watch this. But we were justified. Ooh, when you think about justice, it's amazing. How do you get free from being guilty? <laughs> Even in a legal system, you know that ain't going to work. How in the world, unless you just got some crooked judges, you know, and jurors, jurors or whatever. But how do you get free when you know you're guilty? That's not normal. But here it is, by the grace of God, the kindness of God. He said, you know what? I'm going to show mercy towards you. I'm going to be gracious towards you all because I love you so much. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believe in him shall, have, uh, shall not perish but have everlasting life. So now what does that mean? That means I've given you grace in the form of my son. This is my kindness. This is my generosity. This is uh, uh, or my uh, uh, um, uh, graciousness. I'm talking about generosity. It's still generous. You know, but this is my graciousness towards you that I give you access to live better and be free from sin. That's what grace does. So now I give you this. If you accept him, he now opens you up to access for possibilities. But watch this. Now we go on and we see in Titus. Um, ooh, is that supposed to be two or I got eleven here? With Titus, what though? Let's see. Um, Uh, okay, Titus chapter 2, verse 11, it says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation. Mm, what does that mean? Did you hear that? Let me repeat that one more time. It says, For the grace of God that does what? Bringeth salvation. Uh-oh. So when you got stuck at grace, you didn't realize that grace was on a mission. You just settle for grace only and be like, uh-uh, it's I'm by grace that I'm saved, so I could just do what I, I could still do what I want to. Child, you can go ahead and sit at the bar and have you and get your little tips in this and the because we covered by grace. We ain't going to hell. We ain't going to hell if we do a little sleepy, sleepy to sleep. 
around. No, we going to still make it in. All we got, we covered by grace. No, no, no. You've been given access by grace. What did it say here? It says, uh, uh, for it is for the grace of God brings salvation. So the grace, Jesus Christ, brings you salvation. He gives you access to something else. But if it wasn't for the grace, you wouldn't have it. If it wasn't for the grace, you would not have an opportunity. Grace is the opportunity. Grace is the favor. Grace is to have the pleasure of something. Now, watch this. Glory to God. I hope this is helping some people. Thank you, Jesus. Then it goes and says, <clears throat> uh, for, for the grace of God, bringing salvation um, hath appeared unto me, hath appeared. He has showed up and appeared in this earth and then presented the message of salvation and whoever believes on him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Mm. So it's a guarantee, prophet. So what I'm living, living right for, because they already told me I'm guaranteed it. Yeah, but you didn't read the rest of the fine print. Oh, Lord. Romans chapter 5, verse 21. Again, that's Romans chapter 5, verse 21. It says that as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through, uh-oh, watch this, righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Oh, that just said a whole lot. In other words, watch this. So, sin had the ability to lead you to death. Sin equals death. But now, watch this. Even so, now you're on the lower side because you have received the grace of God in the form of his son, Jesus. Now, through that grace, you have access to now live righteous, which is a pleasing way to God. You've been given access to righteousness. Somebody say righteousness. Watch this. And then it says righteousness unto eternal life. In other words, it, let me show you how this thing works. I'm getting excited. So how this thing works is the grace, boom, comes in the earth. Now I see Jesus Christ. Now he preaches and teaches. And watch this. Those who catch the revelation of who he is, they now embrace who he is and accept the message that he carries and now because they embrace him, now he gives them salvation. He gives them access. Watch this. Now they have the ability, whereas the law was so strict that it was hard for them to live any type of way of righteous. Now because of grace, it made it a little easier. Well, now all I got to do is accept Christ and now it gives me a fresh start to say now, okay, I'm going to teach you how to live righteous now. And now you have access to righteousness. And if you live righteous, then you'll have eternal life. They don't read that fine print. They just only read the grace part and just immediately say, we up, we heaven bound. Okay. You are heaven bound alive. Thank you, Jesus. Because there's a reason why the Bible says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Why? Because if there's no changing of the mind, you'll never change your life. Your life will stay the same until you change your mind. Let me show you something. When somebody get on your nerves enough, and you sick of it, hey, you sick of them. I mean sick, cut them. Real sick. I ain't even, it's so sick, I can't even make it to tired. I'm just sick. <laughs> just sick of you. Sick of you. When, when you get sick of something or somebody enough, you do something different. Because you did what? Make up in your mind. But guess what? If something didn't click in your mind, you would have never made a move. So if, I'm, if he's telling me, be not conformed to this world, 
Because why? If I keep on fashioning my mindset and my mentality, the way I think, the way that I live, the way that I do things according to this world, guess what? I'll never see the change that, gave, that I was given access to. The only thing I'm doing is still standing at the door. And Christ is like, is you going, are you coming? I'm trying to lead you to green pastures and you still standing at the door. You still standing, standing at the door saying, I got grace. I got grace and I'm still waiting on you to move forward. I'm still waiting on you to pursue righteousness now. I'm still waiting on you to present yourself as holy. I'm still waiting on you to be able to live a life that is pleasing before God, but you got stuck at the door. You got stuck at grace, and that wasn't the whole point. Grace was just to give you access to something that you couldn't obtain. That's why he said, it ain't by your works. It was by the kindness of God that you have access to salvation, which then births out righteousness if you let it. It'll lead you, or should I say lead you to righteousness, and then righteousness will take you on to eternal life. But without righteousness, there's no eternal life. And without salvation, there is no righteousness and there is no eternal life. Without accepting and embracing the grace, then there is no access to salvation, which there is no access to righteousness, which there is no access to eternal life. So people don't see the process. They only see the entrance. Mm. This is why, watch this. So now when I come before the Lord and I repent, because to repent means that you sincerely have a change of heart. Lord, please forgive me for all my sins. Hello? Yeah, same time tomorrow. All right. Lord, please forgive me for all my sins. I'm so sorry, God. Your words do not equate sorrowfulness. Your actions, your heart posture. Because it, guess what? Lord, have mercy. Sister London, if I tell you I love you, but yet I treat you nasty, how that look? I say I love you, but then I knock you down and abuse you and put you in the hospital. What, what's that? Oh, Lord. Watch this. I'm going to tell you something that might go over some people's head, but you'll catch it on the way home. Glory to God. And some of y'all that's already home, you'll catch it by the time you take a shower or you laying down in the bed. Watch this. Love is not supposed to hurt, but love is supposed to hurt. Love is not supposed to hurt, but it's supposed to hurt. Love comes and hurts your feelings to tell you the truth. Steps on your toes and make you say, ooh, that hurt. But I recognize it convicted me. But love does not come to damage you. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So those of you that are, I better not do that. I am because I'm the prophet. Glory to God. Those of you that find yourself in relationships and situationships and all of these ships that's about to sink, that ain't meaning you no good and they damaging you. What prophet? He never put his hands on me, but he put his words on you. Or vice versa. Because some of these women is ruthless and worse than the men. And they act like they want to be a man. And I ain't talking about the way they carry themselves or that they want to be the other way. No, I'm talking about they just want to be dominant. If you know, <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. All up in that man's face. Guess what? He might not slap you. He might not knock you down. He might not argue with you. But he sure got the feet to leave. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. So, grace give me access. But what am I going to do with it? So, now... Uh, Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through 7, it says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? Uh-oh. That grace may abound? Oh, Lord. So, Belinda, go there. I want you to read that in your reader voice. Glory to God, because I, I want this to be heard so I can, so I can really, really tear into this scripture. Glory to God. Yes, verse 1 through 7. 
What shall we say then? Uh huh. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us are, so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the grace of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed that henceforth we should not serve sin. Verse 7. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Mm. Again, how do you be guilty and still be set free? It's the grace that gave you the advantage. The grace that gave you access to freedom that you didn't deserve. Mm, glory to God that I did not deserve. Ooh, let me let me show you what this word, this uh, verse one say. It says, "Shall we continue? Shall uh, what shall we say then?" Uh, because watch this. Going back to um, the previous chapter in verse five, uh, uh, we seen that. Uh, let's see where it is here. Uh, I must have it in the wrong place. Verse five, we saw it says. Uh, that as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might uh, grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Christ our Lord. Then you come over to verse um, chapter 6, verse 1, and the first thing he said, the apostle says is, what shall we say then? Hmm. Let's consider this. Uh, shall we continue in sin? That grace may abound. Ooh, you know what that word abound means? To be increased or extended. Grace was designed to be an entrance. Not to be extended all the way over here. When you walk in grace, it is by grace that I'm saved. But it is, watch this, by the power of my will and the power of the Holy Ghost and the wisdom of God's word that starts to lead and guide me into all truth. So the Holy Ghost, Jesus, what did he say? He said, I'm about to go, but there's one that I'm sending that's going to come after me. Uh-oh. So grace gone. Though you have grace, grace did what he was supposed to do. He gave you access. Now you got the access. Now you got to realize what it's saying is, watch this. If grace was here and grace done ascended, I done already came through grace. Now I'm on this journey to righteousness and eternal life. Watch this. Shall we continue in sin? That grace got to keep coming back down and give you another access again. That it got to keep extending itself because you ain't got from the dough yet to start making a move to get over there. So grace, shall we continue in sin that grace got to stay here and stand by your side and be like, you ready yet? You, you going to make a move yet? You going to change yet? You, you going to tra transform your mind yet? Uh, you going you gonna to stop trying to do all of this? You going to stop being angry and bitter? You going to stop You gonna stop envying? You going to stop this, that, and the third? Are you? Because I'm waiting on you. Don't get stuck right here. Celebrate the grace. Because you should never forget grace. Because everything that we do and, we, and the way that we live is through grace. However, I need to make sure. Because watch this. He up there interceding for me. So when I mess up, 
and I could come before him and repent. And that's that he will forgive me in sincerity. He forgives me. Guess why? Because he's my intercessor. So he stands in the gap and say, well, God, I know that their sin say death. I know their sin says that they should be taken down, that they should have to experience some things because of what they're doing, but because of the blood. Remember, hey, Father, remember your grace that you showed to them. And now, because of the grace and because of your sense of your heart, now I say, okay, you cleaned up, keep moving. You, you good now. You can go ahead and walk it out. I almost started dancing. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> you, know, you can go ahead and walk this thing out now. Come on. Oh, I fell, Lord. I'm so sorry. I'm really trying. And I'm really trying. I'm really trying. But I'm, I'm, I'm just really struggling. But I'm really, really trying. For real, I'm trying. Not talking about who they find. No, I can't do that because I'm saved. <laughs> <That> style. <laughs> okay. No, no, that, that ain't no trying. Because real trying look different. <laughs> real trying literally puts up a fight. They say, no, I'm sorry. No, thank you. I, I said, no, thank you. Uh, you need me to call you some help? I'll call 911 if you need are you hard of hearing? Hello? There's, when you're trying, there's an there's a effort to resist. Glory to God. Not this cute resistance. Because cute resistance ain't real resistance. Oh, Lord. Put it on the shirt. Glory to God. Cute resistance ain't real resistance. When you're resisting, it's a whole, listen, if I want to push this wall down, I ain't going to try because I already know what it's made of. Glory. If I want to push this wall down, this wall ain't just finna go down. There's resistance. And I can't be like, <coughs> it won't move. I'm trying, God. I keep messing up. No. When you really want that thing to go down, you you look around. You doing everything. You doing everything you can to knock that wall down. Because you realize this thing is trying to resist, but you don't have power. You don't have power over me no more. But I got power over you because of grace. I was given access. I was given power. What did Jesus say after they had been given access? He now said, go wait in Jerusalem and Terry there. Glory to God. And I don't mean Terry when they say, oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. That was just a form of Terry that they used to do. But to Terry just simply means to wait. They waited. Glory to God. They waited and they waited and they began to do something while they was waiting. They wasn't idle. They weren't just sitting around just, just having tea and, and, and biscuits. No, they were oh, tea and cake. Glory to God. Red velvet. Thank you, Jesus. They was, they was sitting around and they was praying and they was worshiping and they was getting before the Lord because guess what? While we going to serve, we're going we gonna to worship while we wait. We're going to pray while we wait. We ain't going to sit here and just waste time because we don't know when he's coming. We just know we're looking for them, and in the meantime, while we, we're going to keep meeting. We're going to keep on meeting until it happens. And one day while they was all together in one accord, guess what? The Holy Ghost came in, and Jesus promised them that after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall receive power. Uh-oh. You shall receive power. Number one, I was given access to have authority over sin. And sin not over me when I stepped into grace. But now that I'm in grace, he gives me access to more power. Oh, Lord. And now this power helps me to maneuver as a superhuman through life. 
Oh, you thought it was just the prophets and the miracle workers. No, 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 no. As a believer, I don't care if you got a title on your name or not. As a believer, when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you got power. And the way you see the power work is through faith. The same thing that got you saved. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. The same thing that got you saved is the same thing that will keep you functioning. It's the same thing that will keep you in the right mind to walk out in righteousness. It's the same thing to keep you in mind that say, you know what? I got to keep on. I know what it looked like. I know what it feel like. But I'm going to keep walking down this path of righteousness for his name's sake. Because guess what? One thing I understand is I ain't going to let the devil lie to me and tell me I ain't going to heaven. There is no God. There is no heaven. There is no hell. No, no, no. I still believe because of the faith that I'm holding on to it was faith that got me grace and grace got me saved and salvation taught me right brought me to righteousness and righteousness was lead me on so i understand that by grace i'm saved thank you lord and so we celebrate grace we honor grace and we appreciate grace for still standing in the gap for us but i gotta now do my best to walk in righteousness, which then will start to evict sin. Righteousness, righteous living starts to demolish every work of darkness that was established. Because see, what happens is when I got baptized and when I got saved, what happens is now I came up as a resurrected new person. Notice the Bible said, like Christ was resurrected. Why did it say that? Because Christ didn't just rise up just as any kind of way. He came up, and then he came when he presented himself to the people. Guess what? He was in a new body. And it wasn't made of flesh. It looked like, but it wasn't. It was what we call a glorified body. How can you prove it, prophet? Well, when the disciples were in a locked room, after when this started to happen, the women, they were already at the tomb and had seen him. He said, don't touch me yet. I still got to go and present myself before the Father so he can approve and bless it. And once I have done that, glory to God, I have finished his work. I'll be back. And once he came back, they were in a room that was locked, and he walked through the wall. And they were so baffled trying to figure out what in the world just happened. Surely this got to be a ghost. And, and, and you can't be real because can't nobody walk through the wall but his body was not defined by natural elements it was defined it was defined by the very thing that caused him to come in the flesh in the first place so therefore now he say I'm going to show you that I'm real come touch me and they could feel him tangibly but he still wasn't flesh Glory to God. So likewise, when we reach that place of eternity, we got to realize we will likewise have a body like that. That it will not be made of flesh. See, flesh was only to sustain you in the earth. See, this is a whole nother teaching. Lord have mercy. Let me hit this and quit real quick. Flesh is only designed because legally the only way that you can have function in the earth is through a body and through the womb of a woman. That's how God set up the system. That's why demons always trying to possess and have rule in your life. Because they need a body to function or they need somebody to feed off of through your actions. So therefore, now you have uh, 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 you have these um, these entities and things going on. They're spirits. They're spirits. But the thing about Jesus, watch this. I'm going to show you even with God. There was a point in, in the Adam, uh, with Adam and Eve that God would come on a daily basis and come walk through the garden and visit them. And they could see him. They experienced him. But he wasn't a flesh. It was only Adam and Eve, the animals, and everything that was created that was made from the dust of the ground and from water. It was only them. Thank you, Jesus. But why? 
because God created an earth, a physical thing that is made up from the earth. This is why when you die, they say ashes to ashes, dust to dust. In other words, you return back to what you came from. But one thing that did not come from the earth was the very existence of you that came out of God. So now when you leave this body, he now got to give you another body so you won't just be walking around here as a breath of air. <laughs> Glory, to, <laughs> Glory to God. Everybody just breathe. <sighs> did you see it? This is why sometimes when you have spiritual activity, you don't see what you feel. But you know what you feel. Ooh, I felt something brush up against me. And ain't nobody standing there. Ooh, something felt like it just pushed me in the back. But ain't nothing there. But guess what? We're going to have a body. And everybody and anything can see us. Glory to God. So amazing that he has the ability to make himself see. Watch this. He can come and appear to you and you not to you in the same room. This is why some people have encounters. They'll be like, you don't see that standing right there? And they be like, what is you talking about? Because a person, it, they may, may make themselves known to who they want to make themselves known to. And there are times where everybody will see. But my Bible tell me that on that great day, every E.I. is going to see him. Every knee going to bow and every tongue going to confess that grace was real. Glory to God. Glory to God. My last verse of scripture, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9. It says, who hath saved us? And called us with, watch this, and holy calling. Hmm. So you mean to tell me grace was not all there was? Righteousness was there and righteousness was there designed to develop me to be holy? Because holiness without no man shall see the Lord. Which means my eternity might not be with him, but it'll be somewhere else that I don't want to be. So grace gave me access. And now I receive the Holy Spirit. And now Holy Spirit leads me in paths of righteousness. And the paths of righteousness lead me to a state of holiness. That holiness gives me the opportunity to stand before God and I don't have to say, but Lord, I prophesy. But Lord, I cast out. Lord, I was at church every week. What you mean? I gave my tithe and offering faithfully. I served. I, I took care of the homeless. I, I, I fed the hungry. You know, because remember you said in the word that, 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 that when I was hungry, you didn't feed me. When I was, when I was uh, 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 naked, you didn't clothe me. When I was in jail, you didn't visit me. I did all of those things. Yeah, but you had a form of godliness, but you denied the power thereof because the power has the ability to transform you if you let it. If I see no transformation, I don't see my image. And if I don't see my image, there's no reason to take you with me. I'm only coming for those that look like me. This is why it's important to have a relationship because how am I, watch this, Nobody that is under me could ever be any, have any attributes like me if they don't hang around me, if they don't study me, if they're not around me enough to actually see how I do things, how I handle things, they'll never pick it up. And oftentimes you can, you can see people that say, oh, I'm a part of this particular ministry. I'm under so-and-so. I'm a son or I'm a daughter of this person. Really? Oh, look, nothing like them. Because <laughs> I'm going to show you, watch this, woman of God. It's amazing that, how is it that works well in the natural, but we don't get it in the spirit? What you mean, prophet? Because when somebody, let's say, uh, uh, um, 
uh, uh, Deborah come. Uh, uh-uh, that's too old. Oh, I mean, that's that's one of them kind of women, brother James. Like I'm just playing, bro. <laughs> like them old names. <laughs> so here it is. Uh, 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 who? Uh, Destiny. Destiny, come on, Destiny. Glory to God. Destiny come, and me and Destiny are married. Married. Thank you, Jesus. Married. And we expecting the baby. But when the baby come out, the baby look light skin, and neither one of us is light skin. Now that's possible. However, the baby don't look nothing like me. It has no type of feature that looks like me. As a matter of fact, the baby got a slender nose and neither one of us got one. The baby looked like it's mixed with white and black and neither one of us white. It's possible, but it's rare. But the baby looks nothing like me. I see you in it. But there's not one thing that I see that looks anything close to saying that's my child. Now I start to wonder. Wouldn't you wonder? Oh, you say that's you say that Bobby baby? Oh. Okay. He looked just like you. <laughs> that's the nice way of saying I don't see him in that baby at all. And we know, yes, I'm not talking about cases where you know, the baby uh, start out looking like one parent and don't even look like the other one, and then they grow up and it might change or whatever, or they, they more resemble a certain parent. But even then, there's still certain features that can identify with the other parent. Because when I'm looking at you, and I, it's so funny, I was looking at a video Cat Williams had um, shared that he played a role in, and I guess he was a character of somebody in jail and the baby mama came to visit with all these kids and 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 one of the babies was white and he said now nah, that might be my baby but that ain't my child i know that ain't my child he looked nothing like me and that baby is a whole white baby and look he wearing glasses talking about he's and he, he begin to get to the point where he say matter of fact he looked just like the guard you been sleeping with the guard so when those who call themselves children don't look like the person they're following, now it makes us wonder, who is your leader? Or are you just a bastard that's just following somebody around? I'm over here, Sister Bullet. So likewise, when Jesus come back, he don't need you to tell him nothing. Because he's looking for your name and looking at your life and saying, does it look like me? Hmm. I gave them access. I, I remember giving them access to see their name here, but for some reason, it ain't matching. Depart, you work of iniquity. I don't know you. Why? Because I can't identify you. You don't look like my child. You don't look like you belong to the family of God because your life and everything that's playing out. As the Bible said the, the book of life was op- the book was um, was open and the books. Those other books is your life story. So therefore, they're going to be weighed side by side. So your, your name might have been written, but how them books look? The old saints used to talk about the scales. Does your good outweigh the bad? Glory to God. But I'm going to challenge you further than that. Does your resemblance look like? Does it weigh enough to say you look like you're a child of God? To say you look like Christ saved you? To say you look like you embrace grace and walk the path of righteousness to become holy? Because holiness without no man shall see the Lord. I find that amazing because every eye is going to see Jesus but it never said that God was showing up with him 
that means in order for you to get access to that place, you got to still come again through the one. That's called grace. Ooh, what the Bible say? It, J- Jesus don't even know when he coming. The only time he going to know is when the father say, now go. And that's when he's going to make the move. The Bible clearly tells us even Jesus don't know when it's time for his return. Ain't that something? But yet we think we got so much smart down here on the earth. Yep, he coming in September on the 23rd day. What? How you know what Jesus don't even know? Wow, you're really, into, you're that close to God. Oh, wow. So they put a seat for you in between Jesus and God, huh? You like his, you you like the, the highest armor bearer, huh? <laughs> you like the chief of the elders. You don't even sit with the 24. You sit in your own seat right by the throne. <laughs> Glory to God. So we have to understand grace is to be celebrated, is to be accepted, is to be honored. Grace is still working for us as an intercessor, but grace was not designed to be stretched. It was not designed to have to keep on increasing itself because it was just designed to be an access point to opportunity. Glory to God. Somebody give the Lord a praise. Thank you, Jesus. This was something I was thinking about the other day, and and I was like, I'm going I'm to teach that one day. And, and I'm just like, I was sitting there today. I'm like, God, what is it that you want me to do? And I'm going to tell you how good God is because I was trying to figure out, God, what is it that you want me to do? Um, because it just didn't, you know, I'm like, God, what, what am I supposed to preach? What am I supposed to teach you people? We are servicing that. I said, you know, I'll grab a scripture. And I want to know what, if you got something to say. And I told somebody earlier, I say, I've been there, went in my archive and preached a message they ain't never heard. I got messages I preached years ago. Y'all ain't heard it. <laughs> it ain't never been recorded. <laughs> Pull it right on out. And y'all will think, wow, that's new. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. And you know what my confirmation was? Sister Belinda's book that came in the mail. She done wrote another book, y'all, called Embracing Grace. <laughs> Glory to God. And so I, w- I had a reminder on my phone, get it out the mail, because I ain't get it last night. I went to bed. Glory to God. <laughs> to get it out of the mail. And I went by there and got it today, and I'm still sitting in the car. And by this time, I was chewing on this particular topic. And I'm just like, well, God, I, I'm trying to make sure. And I set the book over on my backpack after I pulled it out of the pack and put the pack on the floor. Glory to God. And I looked at the cover and the word stood out, grace. And I say, that's it. That's it. So let's give Sister Belinda a hand for helping me preach tonight. <laughs> Glory to God. So y'all go on Amazon. <clears throat> it was released on December the 1st, I'm sorry, January the 1st, New Year's Day. So when we crossed over, her book crossed over. Glory to God. And so it is available on Amazon. If you go on there, um, you can type in Belinda Williams, Embracing Grace. Uh, Sometimes if you just type her name in, Belinda Williams, it may pull up as an option. Or you could type in Embracing Grace. Um, and see if it brings the name up with it. Um, and let me see if I can get this closer to the camera so y'all can see what it looks like. There you go. You get an idea of what it looks like so you know what you're looking for. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. I got the first copy, y'all. I know. I know. I was determined. I say, did your copies come in yet? She said, no, they'll be his. Okay, good. I got the first one. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now, here, because you got the sign and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. So, congratulations, they're saying. 
uh, to use as a Belinda. Praise the Lord. So it is called Embracing Grace. Somebody can type that in the chat. Um, so those who are going to get a copy, glory to God. And I'm in, encouraging you all. I think it's $12 on there. Um, I, it might be like 16 or something like that after the shipping and stuff, depending on what option you have. If you have Prime, I have Prime, so I don't know what it is, just standard, you know. But um, just go on there, get it. Buy a couple copies. Give one to somebody else. Thank you, Lord. Give, give one to somebody else or give a couple out. Glory to God. So tell somebody, this your early birthday gift. Hello. Happy birthday. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Happy resurrection. Happy Valentine's. Glory to God. Get you your copy. Go ahead and order that tonight, this week or something. If you can't do it this week, you got next week. Get it before January is out. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. So, again, um, the topic tonight was grace, living, and remaining saved. And so I thank God. Father, we thank you for your word on tonight. We pray that you are glorified. You are pleased as your people are edified on tonight. And we do this for your glory. And, Father, we thank you, Lord, for sending a message of clarity and understanding so that we can have a better understanding of grace and its position in our lives, that we can now, through grace, pursue righteousness to develop holiness to gain eternal life. We thank you, Lord, that we shall not lack, and we thank you that we're going to strive and strive daily, and we're going to press, and when we fall, we're going to keep getting up, cleaning ourselves off, and have a sincere heart to change and through repentance. <coughs> And we're going, to, we're going to live a life that is pleasing before God that when Jesus comes back, he will see our efforts and say, you look like me, come with me. And we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give the Lord a praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Are the lines open for them to speak? Glory to God. So tonight, um, <clears throat> we're going to um, open up the opportunity um, if you have a prayer request um, that you can speak up and um, and share what it is that you would like prayer for. Glory to God. I thank God for y'all coming out in house. Praise God. Praise God. I'm looking for most saints to come in house. Praise the Lord. We need to see our tower filling up, dive in. I want people to be able to pass by and say, what they having during the week? What is going on? And you know what's so amazing? We only have it every other week. It, isn't, it ain't even every week. But people are back, um, piling up at churches weekly for Bible study. And we only have this once, uh, twice a month. So glory to God. Saints, I need you to come on in there. Come on in the room. Thank you, Jesus. Come on in the room. And we wanted to grow. Tell somebody, invite people so that they can come and be blessed as well. <laughs> because their breakthrough might not be on Sunday. It might be on a night like tonight. Glory to God. <clears throat> because I, it's a reason I don't call this. Sometimes to help some people's understanding, I'll say it's like Bible study. But this is not Bible study. This is like your midweek refill. This is like your midweek service that you can come and get recharged, that you can keep pressing for the rest of the week. Glory to God. And have something additional that will help keep you going through the rest of the month and the rest of the year. Glory to God. <clears throat> you never know how God is going to move in, in, in here. Glory to God. And um, and as time goes on, it's going to advance. There's going to come a day where it's got to be full-blown praise and worship. There's going to come a day where we have full-blown altar calls, full-blown prophetic flows. We still do that anyways, praise the Lord, <laughs> you know, as necessary. But there's going to come that time where we got to build the house. We got to build the house. Glory to God. Because I'm telling you, I don't want to strain my eyes all the time I'm trying to look at the screen and see who that is. <laughs> glory to God. I do it when it's necessary because the people online need something too. But glory to God, we can't, we, when it comes to the things of God, let God see your hunger. Let him see your desperation. And that press just to come to the house of God, it might be a sacrifice, but it's a good one. It is a good one. Thank you, Jesus. I know you might have got off from work and you tired. Glory to God. Guess what? I, I'm tired too. 
and I still got energy for God. You know why? Because when I got out from work, I didn't go home right away. Matter of fact, I did go home um, after, nope, I lied. I went by the credit union, went ahead and got our lease payment for the month so I could give the man the check. I met him up here, and then I was in here doing some work and messing around with the projector because we're doing our first movie night on the second Saturday of next month. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Glory to God. And um, we're going to have a real nice, I'll tell you more about that in a minute. But, you know, came out here, did some things, and then went home, pulled in the driveway, and back that I say, I want me some seafood. Glory to God. I hear this blender. I want me some seafood, so I went and got me some vegetables and told them to load it up with the, 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 the seasoning and the butter. Hello. <laughs> Glory to God. I sure did. And I enjoyed it. I said, I'm going to have to be stanked tonight at church. Glory to God. But I fixed up well enough. Made sure I brushed my teeth and my tongue. And I went ahead and did the list stand the ring. Come on, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I was making sure I was good and then clean myself up. Glory to God. And put me some smell goods on. And I said, come on, somebody. I'm going to the house of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. So we are um, embarking on a few different things. Um, <clears throat> I want to say this, and I'm, I'm going to still take prayer requests. Um, we're going to get ready for our time of giving as well while I make these announcements. Glory to God. I'm going to ask every one of you all that can. We have a goal that we want to try to meet, and I know we're small in number tonight. But if we can, if we can try to press to get to a minimum of 200 tonight, that would be wonderful. Um, we have some projects that we're trying to accomplish here at the church. Um, I'm always trying to figure out how we can advance things. Um, and one of the things that we're trying to do is add more lighting out um, in the parking lot. We want to get a new cabinet in the bathroom before that one been uh, fell over on somebody. Thank you, Jesus. And so, you know, because it is really wobbly. <laughs> you scared to open the door. Mm -hmm. Oh. Thank you, Jesus. It look nice, but it ain't sturdy. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, you know, um, right now we're, we're looking into some options. They're trying to see about uh, getting something, um, getting a light, the city to put a light out there. But if not, we're not waiting on that. So we have lights that we're trying to get. So when we have night services, um, <clears throat> you can see better going out, especially to the far end of the parking lot. We thank God for the big light closer to the building, but we need some further out. And so we want to try to get that 200 to help us to take care of those two lights, um, <clears throat> putting two more lights down here on this end. And that way um, it will illuminate um, the other side of this close parking lot as well as the far end of it. And then as you see, when you came in, we also put a new light up yesterday at the entrance um, to kind of light that area because sometimes, especially if um, their light is not on over there, then it's really, really dark when you're turning into that driveway. So it's not going to be super bright, <laughs> but it provides enough light so that you can at least see coming in that you ain't just, you know, going into driving into the woods or something. Praise the Lord. So we want to try to do that on tonight. <clears throat> if y'all can help me tonight, if you're going to give to help us, um, try to reach that goal. Just just type it in the chat. I'm giving. Glory to God. I'm not going to tell you what amount to give. You give whatever's in your heart. If we go above and beyond that, we can do some other things. Amen. And then Sunday, we're gonna, uh, we got a goal for what comes in on Sunday as well. But tonight, that is my goal. Thank you so much. I greatly appreciate that. Um, that is um, my goal as well to try to um, get some things knocked out now that we have taken care of the main aspect of business first. You know, we did that today, so now we can go ahead and do some other things. And then next month, um, cause, and I'm telling y'all this thing so y'all will see how we're progressing and how we move it. because I'm always doing stuff. Some stuff y'all I don't even tell y'all about. Y'all just walk in and be like, wow, when that came in? You know, because I'm always trying to advance the house of the Lord 
and I do hear what people say. I do listen to what you all are saying. And we it's stuff that we know, but, you know, it's just like, you know, let's figure out how we can adjust this, how we can make this happen. And one of the things is lighting, because I've had several people that have said things about lighting. Y'all have made do with it. I thank God for y'all doing that. Um, but we're going to do what we can. Even if the city put a light, at least we'll still have, we'll just have it lit. Glory to God. But we're going to try to get this light that's out here is 800 watts. Um, there was another light that was almost 200. It was 200 by itself. If we would have got two of those, then you do the math. Thank you, Jesus. But the 800 watt is as bright as this one here. That is 800 watt, the one on this tree. And so, therefore, that one is really bright when it's at its maximum volume. Um, as it get later in the night, it dims down a little bit. And then hours later, that's when it goes out so it can recharge in the morning. But it um, at its fullness, usually when it's on, um, um, that's 800 watts. So can you imagine having two more of those on the other side? So where we used to have a light on the other tree, we're going to put one there. And we're going to put another one on the tree close by. So it's going to really illuminate that so the saints can walk with confidence. Glory to God. So I thank God for those of you that have said online that you are giving. Um, those of you that are giving in-house, you can give um, as you are able to, um, if you can. Thank you, Father. And um, <clears throat> so like I say, these are some things we're trying to do next month. Um, Y'all remember last year, close to the end of last year, um, I came and testified that the ministry was debt-free. Praise God. And so uh, we thank God for that, and it's going to happen again because we do have some things that are on payment plans. And um, my goal is, Lord's will, by next month, once we take care of the main, um, our main um, uh, lease payment, then we can go ahead and take care of knocking the debt out. Glory to God. And so uh, we have to also make sure that whatever Sister Belinda has communicated with everyone about um, dues for the appreciation, um, make sure that we're sticking with that so that we can get that budget knocked out uh, or y'all can get that budget knocked out. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Because if not, then the goal that I just mentioned will not be able to happen because we will have to take money from that to now take care of that. So we're trying to prevent that. And um, also another thing that we want to put in your hearing as well is whatever the love offering is that is supposed to be set aside per person for the appreciation, if people don't give like need be or like was discussed, what will happen is all of my love offering will have to go towards taking care of everything else. So that means it takes from whatever y'all are trying to present to me. So those are things to just consider and praise the Lord. It's awkward talking about it, but it just got to be said, you know. So thank God for those of you that are on top of it and you have already been reporting to Sister Linda um, to do your part, <clears throat> but she needs your help um, because she made a statement to me and I don't want to have to see that happen, that if she have to, she will have to foot out of pocket some kind of way and that's not possible. Because that should never have to be when we have enough people in the ministry to take care of what needs to be done. Amen. So we do have things coming up, things we're taking care of. Um, next Friday is Youth Friday. Glory to God. It's Youth Friday, our first one. And we got little activities going on and um, something we're going to teach the youth. And we're going to give them a little challenge. So when they come back the next time, they might win a prize. Glory to God. So um, we got little creative ways to teach them the word, but we don't want them to come in and just feel like it's just a Bible study. You know, so we're trying to bring it to a level that they can have fun and learn while they're having fun. And so um, we got some nice activities. Um, if you will be bringing any youth, please let me know how many. I don't need no names. I just need to know how many or an idea of how many people you're bringing um, to drop off because we need to make sure we got enough supplies because I don't want to end up with 20 students here. I mean, students, Lord have mercy, 20 kids, and then we ain't got but 12 supplies because that's going to be real awkward. So I need to know an ideal number of how many kids will be here, how many youth um, will be here 
so that we can do this and uh, we're going to transform the room um, and bring out some tables for the activities and things that's going to be done um, and we're going to uh, try to um, order some pizza and have some uh, refreshments for them. Praise the Lord. So when they go back home, they don't have to be too hungry. Glory to God. Because it depends on how many kids here. Thank you, Jesus. You might be a tap hungry. You know, if it's 20 kids, uh, everybody get a slice and a half. <laughs> Lord have mercy. So, you know, so uh, we, we will see what happens. But we're going to try to order pizza and get something to drink. So that way, by the time they get home, you know, depending on what their bedtime is, they don't have to worry about trying to eat and lay down on heavy food going home. So um, it's going to be a good time. And um, that's at 7 p.m. next Friday, 7 p.m. next Friday. And um, I've gotten some supplies, but like I said, I need to know an ideal number so that I know um, how many exact supplies we need to make sure we have because we want to always have a little extra just in case. Um, and um, um, movie night, was that what I was supposed to be saying, or was it youth night? Okay, so I said that. And like I say, movie night will be the second Saturday of February um, at 6 p.m. At 6 p.m., it'll be here. Um, now, let me tell you this. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. We're going to have it set like a theater. We're going to have the black drapes and everything with the big screen on it, just like you in the theater. Come on, somebody. Have the lights down low and have a concession stand. Come on, somebody. And we're going to have it where um, you can get some free popcorn, but guess what? You're going to get a little thirsty after a while. And then you got to go back to the concession stand and buy your soda. Oh, see there? See that? <laughs> Glory to God. We'll probably have maybe uh, uh, we'll, see, we'll see how far we're going to go with it. We might buy some hot sausage and, and buy some skip, some different candies and stuff that you can buy. Um, that stuff you got to purchase, but the, the popcorn free. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. The popcorn is free. So, <laughs> And the movie is free. Amen. And so we will, as we, um, we're filtering through some movies right now, um, I, I seen one today that I might consider, and I had, um, 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 so we, we're going to see. We'll see, because I'm, I'm trying to skim through some stuff to see, because um, you got to have the right kind of movie. Glory to God. And my thing is, it's not so much of whether it's secular or Christian-oriented. It's just, it's just a matter of the content, you know, and making sure that the content is going to be right for the saints. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And make sure it's something that'll be suitable for any and everybody. So that's that's the things that I'm trying to consider. Um, cause no, please don't come to me with no romantic stuff, cause I'm I'm not gonna be here. <laughs> yeah. So Belinda, I'll show you how to run the popcorn machine. I'm not coming. So <laughs> you know, and, and people tell me, son, oh, it's a beautiful love story. You watch that at home on Lifetime. Thank you, Jesus. Lord have mercy. But Father, let me bless this offering. Father, we thank you for every person that has given tonight. We declare that you are now causing overflow into their lives. We thank you that you now open the windows of heaven, pouring out blessings that we don't have room enough to receive. Thank you for more than enough. Thank you for the overflow. Thank you that you're now rebuking the devourer for our sake, which means devils, you got to back off of our finances, our financial status, our bank and credit union accounts, our credit scores, our possessions. Lack, poverty, and debt, you got to go now because the Lord God rebukes you in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Um, I want to share a testimony. Do we have any prayer requests online? Glory to God. Do we have any prayer requests in-house? We do? Okay. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. None online. Okay, what do you need prayer for? Mm -hmm. Okay, what's the first name? Okay, Father, we call Patricia's name out in connection to this woman of God, and we declare, Patricia, all shall be well in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Father, we declare that you shall send help. You shall cause things to flow smoothly. There shall be no stress, no worry, no anxiety. But, Father, let everything work together for the good. And, Father, we declare there shall be a successful surgery. We declare there shall be no errors, no errors, no errors, but it shall be successful. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen. Thank you, Lord. Child, we ain't praying for the non <laughs> Father, we thank you right now for Sister Belinda and her procedure that she has on tomorrow. Father, we declare successful procedure, successful uh, procedure in the name of Jesus. Father, we declare in the name of Jesus Christ that no weapon formed against her shall prosper. And we declare that anything that the enemy may try to do to rise up against her, it shall be condemned in the name of Jesus. And Father, we declare that you should guide the hands of those who are performing the procedure and every person that is in the room, God, don't even let anybody come in the room that's not right. I don't care if they are assigned. Switch them out. And give somebody else in the name of Jesus. Father, let there not be any attitudes of mistreating, but God, let it be well in Jesus' name, not just with Sister Belinda, but even with um, Sister London's sister in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to share a little testimony and then we out of here. We did pretty good tonight on time. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, um, I want to tell you, I honored my word. I was so excited today, y'all. My check hit my account around by 1 o'clock or somewhere up in there or something. Glory to God. Or sometime after, I don't know when it hit. I just know it was hit. Glory to God. My first check, praise God. And I did what I told God I was going to do. I gave my tithe and offering, and then I gave an additional seed. And, and in doing that, I had um, originally had a certain amount that I was going to give for my seed. And not just this, but um, I began to look at um, on what they talked about for the Jewish calendar and the, the, the year number and things of this nature. <coughs> and I was watching a service um, the other day, and the prophet that was challenging the people that Sunday told them to sow the amount of that year, um, which was not far off from what I was given. It was only like $8, uh, however much it was. It was only a few dollars more than what I was already given. And so I said, well, God, I'm going to just go on and add that to my seed, the, the rest of that to my seed, and just give that as, um, as an amount for my year. And so um, sure as I gave it, woman of God, a few minutes later, literally a few minutes later, I get a, um, I get a cash app notification, and somebody has sent me the main amount that I had originally told God I was going to sow. So no sooner than I gave it, he gave it right back. Lord have mercy. And so this is the life of a soul. Glory to God. Because I'm telling you, I ain't going to never quit. I'm going to keep sowing. And, 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 and my thing was, before I, before I was released from my job, I sold. When I was without a job I still sold when I could I still tithe I still gave my offering because I don't I don't just give a tithe I give tithe and offering that's how I was raised and that's how I was taught you give an offering with your tithe your tithe is what God requires but your offering is like you're saying this is something I'm giving you because I'm grateful this is a tip to you and so I give him a tithe and I give him an offering at the same time Glory to God. I know some people give offerings during the different services and stuff throughout the week, you know, and they give their tithe during a certain time, you know, and that's just fine. You can do that how you want to. But one thing I, I, I if I give a tithe and I give it multiple times a week, I done got bliss. Somebody that came and gave me $50, $5 or $6 rather is coming out of that because I need to give God five and give him a dollar to, to say thank you. Glory to God. And then like I say, on top of that, then we have seeds that we sow. And like I say, in this month, thank you, Holy Spirit, the Lord told us, he says, this month, you need to sow as much as you can because it's to set you up for the rest of your year. So January is your gateway. So how you sow is how you set yourself up. 
And so, therefore, every chance I can, I'm going to be sowing in January because I want to make, I'm going to sow through the rest of the year, too. But I'm, I'm making sure I obey God because I want to make sure I set myself up very well. Thank you, Jesus. And um, and like I encourage you all, I think that was Sunday, we got to get out of the habit as the body of Christ are only sowing when the prophet calls for it, a man or woman of God called for it, or because God said to do this. No, you got to learn how to sow when you're in need. You got to learn how to sow just because. You got to learn just to sow just because, God, you know what? I believe you're going to do some great things, and I don't know what you're going to do, but I'm just believing you're going to do it, so I'm finna sow a seed. I was taught, um, we used to have, uh, we used to call it at my old church, SOS. A sacrificial seed offering. And you know, in the world, SOS is a sign for help. And so one thing I have, I could truly say is I've never seen a sacrificial seed that I've sown go without reaping a benefit. Even times where my prophetic conference, I didn't have the money to take care of what needed to be taken care of. But I was, I remember I was in a service and the prophet called uh, for $75. I said, God, we ain't really got this. I ain't got it. And I'm like, the ministry just barely got the 75 in the account. <laughs> Probably got a hundred and some dollars in there. And we got a whole conference that costs hundreds of dollars. Glory to God. Probably more than that. Because what I can't remember. It's probably over a thousand. But, you know, depending on how big we're going and what we got to take care of. But I'm like, we ain't got a, a, a good hundred in there. Good. And I say, you know what? I'm a so in faith. I am. Because I'm like, this little bit ain't enough to take care of all of that in the first place. And when we understand that if you lose what's in your hand, God can multiply it and cause, cause you to have what you didn't have. Glory to God. But the problem is we don't understand he may not come when you want. But it's going to be on time. Glory to God. So I'm a living witness of what tithing and giving my offerings will do, but I'm also a living witness of sowing seeds in obedience and just because. Glory to God. And this year, I'm determined to be a better sower. I was already sowing, but I'm determined to be an even better sower. Glory to God. And I encourage you all to come on the journey too, and, and we're going we're gonna to do some things. And, and Oh, I heard the Holy Ghost. Thank you. We need to get out of here. I was doing good on my time now. Okay, I still got a few minutes. Thank you, Jesus. I'm trying to make sure I don't go past nine. Thank you, Lord. But what I, Lord Jesus, somebody just tell the Lord, thank you. God told me just now, and I know this might sound real strange. You can go on to stop the recording, Sister Belinda. No, matter of fact, let it keep going. <clears throat> uh, the world can talk if they want to and, and say, oh, you're talking about money. And this, that, and that. Let, them, let them hear it. That's fine. Because guess what? It's going to be a prophecy that we can go back to and count the fact that it came to pass. But God said some of you don't even realize that if you start sowing just for the house, he says you'll start seeing that I'll send more people with more seed. I, I, I had never even really looked at it like that before. Your seed will attract seed. So if we sow and when we're sowing, and there are times that we sow to, you know, just for the sake of the house. God, I'm sowing this seed because I'm believing you something for this house because I know you'll take care of me because of what I'm doing. But I'm sowing for the house that you will fill the house with other sowers. He going to do it. You watch and see what I say. Glory to God. You'll, you'll be looking around and, and it'll be months or years before you realize who you're really sitting next to and the fact that they 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 give it, they they making six figures and they can easily put $1,000 every week in the offering and they're just like, Prophet, we just advancing in advance of what's going on. Your seed brought in seed, which caused us to increase. Glory to God. So <clears throat> we thank the Lord. I'm done. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. See, y'all, ooh, Lord. I can't, when you're anointed, <laughs> oh, have mercy, and it just go to flowing through you. Oh, have mercy. And sometimes, just honestly, I don't be wanting to leave the house of the Lord. I enjoy the presence of God in his house. I do. And, and sometimes I just be at a loss for words and don't know what to do, don't know what to say. 
And you know, the carnal mind say, well, just end that. <laughs> but sometimes it ain't that simple. Sometimes you can't just move so quick. It's not the moment for it. And you just got to stand there and wait for God to say whatever he's going to say and do whatever he's going to do. Lord have mercy. Let's stand to our feet. Because I'm going to stick to my 9 o'clock. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you so much for this day. Thank you for the opportunities. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the opportunities. We thank you, Lord God, that you are increasing this house. We thank you that you're increasing our lives, increasing our homes, increasing the homes that we don't have yet. Glory to God that we're going to get, increasing us in the area of our vehicles and our finances and on our jobs, increasing us in our businesses. We thank you, Father, that there's nothing that we should lack. We thank you, Father, even for musicians coming to this house. We thank you, Lord God, that you'll bless us with the finances that we'll be able to secure musicians without having to come and tell them we ain't got it. Lord, we thank you that you're going to send us the right people into this house that we can protect the atmosphere in the name of Jesus. And I want to insert this here um, right before we close. The Holy Ghost brought this back to my remembrance. Um, Y'all see that the ministry is doing very well right now. Um, everything's real quiet. You need to be concerned. Glory to God. Um, and I don't mean necessarily, I, I didn't say worry. I say you need to be concerned. In other words, it needs to put you in a posture um, of getting ready to war. Because oftentimes when it gets quiet, it, that means the devil is using that time to plan. And one thing I have noticed through these three years, the last three years that we've been doing ministry, um, it never fails. I was just telling Sister Belinda this or Brother um, James this the other day, that it never fails every year. There's some kind of challenge, division hitting the ministry, things happening, people can't get along, stuff's constantly being looking like it's about to fall apart. Every year it has not failed. And it will come and I will give warning and say, God says um, there's a, 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 a spirit of division about to try to hit the ministry. So put out every fire. And it was like it went in one ear and they done forgot all about it. Now everybody tore up. And so, you know, now people are out of place. And sometimes it's not that. Sometimes people have challenges that come to them and it drag them down. It's a whole lot of stuff. I watch this kind of stuff. Because you can't have a ministry like this, a ministry of deliverance and healing and breakthrough and not see that the devil going to come and try to tear that down. He does not like that because you free people from his kingdom. So therefore, we got to know that the devil is plotting. That's why it's quiet. Yeah, we in, a, we in a celebration season. That's wonderful. But I ain't celebrating so hard that I ain't paying attention either. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. This is the season for the watchmen. This is the season for the watchmen, especially in this year. The season for the watchmen. I see my gifts starting to open up now into uh, future prophecy, and I don't want to go there tonight. Thank you, Jesus. We'll deal with that another time. But, Father, we thank you again. And as we travel our destinations, there will be no harm or danger. We declare that all is well with us in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you and have a wonderful week. I'll see you Sunday at 12 noon.